بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه من ولا اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا أنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم وتب علينا أنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحانك لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر أنت على كل شيء قدير اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما واجعل التفرق بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا شقيا ولا محروما in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى the most compassion, the most merciful, all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him and he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. You know, I can't uh, ignore the fact that just a few minutes ago Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made me a witness. One of the, your sisters, she uh, declared her shahada to Islam now. I just a quick, quick message for myself and my respected brothers and sisters. You know, uh, we have two terminology that we use for those people. Many people, they say convert, and we prefer to say revert. Because a convert is the person who changed from to. The revert is the one who returned back to his original status. We as Muslims believe that the, by default of our creation, that if we are left without any kind of influence, we would be definitely submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muslims. So, but this reminds me of the ni'mah. Now, the majority of you who are listening to me, basically, you were born Muslims. Wallahi, ya ikhwah. Okay, I myself was born a Muslim. But because I, you know, sometimes because of reading about those people, sitting with those people, you know, tackling their questions, handling their doubts, you might be a little bit be more aware about the ni'mah that we are living in. The fact that you are born as a Muslim, which means it's for granted, you came to this life because of your culture, your country, your race, your whatever, your parents, you are a Muslim. You can't imagine what kind of suffering and challenges and ambiguity and, you know, fear that they have in their hearts and not all of them and many of them, for many reasons, they don't know about the truth that we know. They don't know. So please, sometimes, let's always, from one angle to keep saying, Allahumma ya muthabbit al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Oh Allah! Keep us steadfast, not to be on a shake, on a ground, or a shaky ground in our faith. And the other, let's say, uh, part of the dua, we let's always keep saying Alhamdulillah ala na'mat al-Islam. Alhamdulillah ala na'mat al-Islam. Wallahi, as I told you, sometimes we don't have this kind of beautiful feeling that they have it. Because they experience the other. <laughs> we took it for granted. You know, I mean, I, I, I think, I, I, I believe, I will make like a very simple, quick analogy. This simple, quick analogy basically is like many of us, may Allah protect all of you and help you, I, because I have just experienced this just a few days ago. You know, my mother passed away just less than three weeks ago. Allah yarham ha ya and my father before that, and some of you, I think, you lost your parents. Now, a man or a woman, as long as he is living with full, luxurious life, fully protected by his parents, the money is there, the food is there, the clean house is there, everything is there, he will not appreciate what does it mean to have a mother. <laughs> when he appreciates this, when she passes away. Out of a sudden, Hello, Assalamu Alaikum, Adham Allahu Ajrakum. Excuse me, what? Adham Allahu Ajrakum. What do you mean? Your mother passed away. But in many cases, if he was not doing what we call Birr al okay? He was fully respect, or Awul Iyadu Billah, if he was applying the concept of Uquq al he was disrespectful, the regret will not Benefit, but my point appreciating the value of the blessing of the ni'mah. Once she passed away, then he said, Oh my god, then 
he will start remembering, Ya Allah, who was taking care of me? Ya Allah, who was always making the food ready for me? Ya Allah, who used to do such and such? Why? Now, we, because now someone other than the mother will not do 90% of the mother does. I mean, this is an example sometimes. And this is applicable on the father as well. The full protection, the source of the money, the source of the power, the source of empowerment for anything. Don't worry, I will do it for you, mashallah. My daddy is my superhero. You know, when we were kids, your daddy is the real superhero. <laughs> and the only. <laughs> when you say, you know, my dad does such and such. My dad will do such and such. Subhanallah. When you lose your father or your mother, you will start appreciating what does it mean that you don't have a parent. The same thing. May Allah, may Allah protect all of us. Alhamdulillah, we don't need to lose Islam to appreciate what Islam is. That's why Allah gave us the faculty of imagination. Are you with me? Just imagine what if you are not a Muslim. Try to imagine yourself without Islam. By this, most likely you will be able to appreciate. And by the way, now, how do we feel with kind of eagerness that we would love to go to the Jannah. We imagine, we compare. We do many things in our lives to seek pleasure and happiness. True or false? When you know that in the Jannah, there is no sleep. In the paradise, there is no sweat, no bad smell, no urine. You eat out of just pleasure. And after you eat, you don't go to the toilet. And what comes out of your body will come as a perfume from your skin. You don't sleep. There is no sun, no heat, no cold. You eat out of just enjoyment. Okay? Okay. Now you can make this kind of simple analogy to the beautiful moments in your life. By making analogy, you can imagine what does it mean to enjoy living forever in such case. <laughs> You are not there, still you are not there. But can you imagine the possibility? Yes. What happens to you? Allah created us in an amazing way. By the way, you know we have the subconscious. We have the conscious and subconscious. The brain of the subconscious, when you imagine something, sometimes the imagination's influence on yourself up to 95% as if it happened in reality. So imagine, when I tell you, imagine if you lost Islam, you can do it. Just close your eyes, imagine yourself, you don't believe in the hereafter. But if you don't believe in the hereafter, and you don't believe in Allah, and therefore, okay, so there's no meaning for ethics. Because ethics means I do something good for the sake of being rewarded by the one who decided what good is, which is Allah. Type. If Allah does not exist, Hereafter does not exist. Ethics is nonsense. So therefore, why should I be honest? But what if I'm not honest? I'm ready to lie against anyone I face, including my parents. But what, why should I control myself not to steal? Why not to hit? Why not to kill? Why, why not? Imagine yourself, if you lost this part, you will find no problem why not to do this part. Imagine yourself doing these things. <laughs> what would happen to you? <laughs> you lost yourself. Because your system will kill you. Then, okay, what will happen to me? You have no idea. That's why many non-Muslims, wallahi, we have, we must have this kind of feel of sympathy and empathy for them. Be careful. When a non-Muslim asks you, even if he's attacking Islam, please be patient with him. Sometimes, because they are overloaded and brainwashed with bad concepts. That's why Allah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu <laughs> You were sent by the commandment of Allah to give glad tidings, not to spread, you know, the hate against Allah in the hearts of the people. Because, I mean, they don't know. Most of non-Muslims, they don't know the truth. They don't know the reality and they don't know Islam. So therefore, you enjoy Islam. In case if you are enjoying Islam. And I hope all of us are enjoying Islam. Now, can you imagine what does it mean? 
uh, I give another example, then I will go inshallah to the dars, subhanallah. Now, by default, alhamdulillah, we come to the masjid and we pray. It's part of our life. We pray. We do the sujood. We do the rukur. We do the prayer. We close our eyes. We communicate with Allah as part of our life. Imagine that you don't know Allah. Delete this aspect from your life. Delete the fact that you come to a masjid. You don't prostrate. You don't know your God. You have no idea about your Lord. Either you don't believe in his existence or you have no idea to know whether he does exist or not. If you know that this supposed God does exist, you don't know which God it is. Is it the God of Jews or the God of Christians or the God of Muslims or the God of Hindus or the God of Buddhists? You have no idea. Can you imagine the chaos and this kind of amazing feelings in your heart? Try to imagine now, now while I'm speaking. Try to imagine that you don't know who Allah is. Because many other religions, they have a lot of mixture of many things that made everything ambiguous. Ghamad, humud. You don't know what. That's why in Europe in specific, apart from North America, in Europe, you know, they always make many things before. Now in Europe, the highest level of youth now, they are agnostics now. Have you heard about this terminology? Agnosticism. What is agnostic? Let you tell me about what kind of ni'mah we as Muslims are living. Agnosticism, it means one of two things. It's either the person, agnostic, which means Allah Adri, the one who is not sure of. But he is not sure of what? Either or. The agnostic is someone who is not sure whether there is God or there is no God. He's in the middle of nowhere. He's not powerful enough to say, no, I have the evidences that God does exist. Neither he has the opposite. He can't say, I completely aware and I can support completely that God does not exist. He's not, not an atheist and he's not a believer. He's an agnostic. This is one of the definitions of agnosticism. The other possibility of agnostic and ag agnosticism is the one who knows and he believes in God's existence. However, he's not able to decide which religion represents this God. <laughs> which means, is it Judaism? Is it Buddhism? Is it Hinduism? Is it any kind of ism, including Christianity and Islam? No, he has no idea. So he's lost. You and me, we don't have this problem. <laughs> I mean, it, it, the example that I will highlight might be maybe funny, but please take it as simple as it is. Compare, let's compare yourself in two situations. You are traveling to a new city. You have a very limited time. You are participating in a very, very intensive, important course. You have very limited, limited time for your break and your lunch. You started searching for a good restaurant. You don't know anything about the food in that city. Clean, dirty, they wash their hands, infections, problems, health, clean, nothing at all, just searching. Look to the waste of the time that you will be doing and the uncertainty if you are have limitation of time, if you just opened any place and you ate it, then you discovered because if you have diarrhea and you have a problem in your stomach and you're suffering and then you, you develop some kind of uh, like uh, a trauma or some kind of uh, phobia against restaurants because you don't know what happened, they're cheating or something. Imagine all of these things happen to you. Scenario two. You went to a city, many people before you, they were there, they recommended to you the highest, best, delicious, clean place ever. From the airport, without wasting not one minute, directly, you served your time, best food, and you, you went to do your course. Imagine yourself in two scenarios. Scenario number one, you are in the course, you don't know what's happening to your <laughs> stomach, you don't know if you will lose yourself because you might be poisoned, you have no idea how you're disappointed you are because you did not have a nice food, 
you are in the course doing your best but you are not happy because of the bad choice that you have made while in this time you are enjoying because simply you did it in the best way and someone else has done it for you by the way it's not your choice <laughs> this is in my understanding the difference between someone who was born as a muslim and the suffering that someone else by the way the other one will have another taste of happiness when he discovers the best but he has already wasted a lot of time okay he might enjoy it but i'm talking about the risk now <laughs> you don't have this risk خلاص clean food closed nice food closed hygienic system place most delicious everything you have enjoyed you are just enjoying the coffee in the uh, now you are focusing on your intensive course walillahi al-mathal al-a'la just an idea to try it really to appreciate the blessings of Allah that when someone is born as a Muslim anyway طب, let me go to our lesson now Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad uh, Brother Ahmed can you close the door معلش يعني هذه مشكلة أصوات الأولاد I don't know how we can <coughs> solve it طيب last time brothers and sisters <coughs> In last session, we recited قول الله تعالى. If you remember the last ayah, it was يا أيها الذين آمنوا كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم وشكروا لله إن كنتم إياه تعبدون. All believers eat from what from the good things we have provided for you and give thanks to Allah if you truly worship Him alone. This was last time. And we highlighted the following concepts. We talk about, in our faith, the one who decides what is lawful, what is not lawful, what is good, what is bad, ultimately is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when, number one, and we said something about, sometimes we are able to realize why it's good or why it's bad. And sometimes we are not. It's like, for example, alcohol, I mean, no two people of intellect will dispute about how harmful alcohol is. <laughs> it's one of the main reasons of car accidents, one of the main reasons of murder, as one of the main reasons. You know, we have tens of evidences to a degree. In many cases, you are not allowed to drink alcohol to do many things. And they test you, they stop you, the police, they test your blood, which means they, they admit how harmful it is. It's clear. The pork. We can do some efforts to discover something, but for sure, 100%, we were not told. We might discover some indications about how bad it is, but this is not the point. Because I told you, some people, they say, is it because it's not clean? Okay, one of the main reasons. Because sometimes it deals with its, what comes out of her body. Yes. Tayyip, what if, if we isolated a pig not to live with other pigs and we gave the food separated completely in a cage not touching anything bad now it's clean is it halal no still it's haram because haram means prohibited because allah did not tell us it is prohibited because it's not clean he said it is prohibited so when we were dealing with this ayah now what is our way to decide what is good or bad? Do we use our minds and we judge, then we call it good? If this is the case, tell me who has the right among the human beings, really, when he or she decides that what is good is good for everyone. I gave you one example, so if you remember. For millions of Germans 70 years ago, Nazism, was it good or bad? I repeat, for millions of Germans, 70, 80 years ago, Nazism for them was good or bad? It was good. Tayyip, who had the power to convince them they were not? But they are, they are clever people and they are humans. Can human beings be deluded? Because, you know, I believe in science. I believe in my mind. Many criminals 
organized criminals. By the way, do you know that we have Italian mafia, Russian mafia, Irish mafia, all of them? We have many movies about them. Do you think that they believe they are doing something that's part of their right or not? Yes. Really, by law? I don't know this. No. Sorry, just uh, if you don't, uh, sister says in Canada, if you provide alcohol to a children, it's a crime. It's a, uh, an act of crime because this is definitely a, uh, like an uh, evidence that it, they know it's bad. Yeah. Mm. Plus 18, they say, which means they know it's harmful for below 18. Yeah? Thank you very much. That's true. Yes, which means we realize, generally, we realize. But sometimes, even though we realize, we don't do the opposite for other reasons, motives, motivations, which is desire, power, authority, or, you know, whatever. But I mean, now the new point I was trying to make. Now, to decide what is good and what is bad, keep in your mind, if this specific thing is mentioned in Islam by Allah or by an authentic Surah Prophet Muhammad you need to submit not necessarily because you understood in your mind why. Because the mind can be brainwashed and deluded and we have relativism. That's why I'm telling you, do, do you believe German people are clever or not? Actually, they are one of the cleverest people in the history of Europe. But yet, the fact that they were clever, did that save them not to be Nazis? No. Type. The fact that they are clever and they have scientific thinking, did it stop them from killing others, believing they are doing the right? They occupied Poland and France and killed, and they caused the death of millions of people. And by the way, we have many examples. Many examples. The fact that my mind, type. If you ask Japanese people 120 years ago, by the way, do you know that Japan was colonizing part of China? Japan. They were colonizing, killing Chinese people. Do you know this? And you can't imagine how difficult they were killing them. More, but more than 100 years ago. But at that time, Japanese people, do you think they believe they have the right to do it from their point of view with their way? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So, so that's why we need, we need the divine teachings to control us. Now, look, any country, for example, France, they colonized 16 African countries up to this moment. They are still colonizing them now. They control them, 16 countries, type. France, from one angle, they are proud that in their country, in 1917, 89, up to 17, 98, they have the French Revolution, which ended up with secularism and the human rights, true or false, type. They believe in secularism, they believe in the human rights, but they are controlling 16 African countries, killing them. <laughs> But the fact that they know this, did it stop them not to be unethical? To do bad against good? Are you with me? So we have tens of examples, by the way. It's not one or two or tens or something. So because sometimes, hey, the best thing, I believe in science and I believe in humanity. Which human on which science of who? So please keep this in your mind because this is a very hot discussion always. You as a believer in Islam, when you speak about faith, someone will raise the flag of humanism and science. If this happened to you, be able to discuss a very thorough academic discussion with him. They've said, I believe in science. He does not know what he's talking about. If he said, I believe in humanism, he said, please, I will follow you. Tell me which version of humanity. <laughs> if he said, you know, human beings, you know, they agree on many things, such as, you tell me, yalla, fadal, give me. Give me a devil. Which, which version of humanity? Wallahi, let's say, give me an idea. Americans, what did they do in Vietnam? 
You know that according to the BBC, I watched the documentary. The source is the BBC documentary. I watched it in the UK when I was doing my PhD. They said Americans, during the time of trying to occupy Vietnam, they showered Vietnam with 26 million tons of chemical weapons which is equal to four nuclear bombs. Do you know? You know it uh, finished uh, 60s. So we are, uh, 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 I mean, the war finished about 60 years ago. Up to this moment, in newborn babies, they have four fingers, six fingers, the eye in a different place. They have part of their head not complete, completely, because of what? Chemicals in the soil. 26 million tons of chemical bombs 60 years ago. Pipe, is this good or bad? I mean, who, who on earth does not know that this is bad? Top. <laughs> These are examples. Many examples. I watched another BBC documentary. You know South Africa. We know South Africa, sir. Right? Before Nelson Mandela, before they became now, you know, it was apartheid. One of the greatest example about racism. Wallahi, I was shocked. The British themselves, I forget, was it BBC or Channel 4 or Channel 3? Because they have two official, when I was there 25 years ago, they had four channels. BBC 1, BBC 2, Channel 3, private, Channel 4, private. I forget on which one, but I watched on one of them a documentary proving that European, European colonizers in South Africa, at the very beginning of colonizing South Africa, they were spreading the cholera, the typhoid, deliberately through the blankets and through the candies and the chocolate, spreading them with South Africans. They were giving them candies for the kids. It's infected with typhoid and cholera. Uqsum Billah on the BBC. But this is good or bad? Do, don't they realize that this is bad? I'm just giving you an idea. <laughs> uh, just to tell you, the one who decides good and bad is Allah. And it's not just to realize the good and bad. You need to feel that there is a power that will hold you accountable not to do the bad. He, with this we complete it because they know that this is bad. But who cares? They have the power. So we have two parts of the equation. Who has the right to decide what's good or bad? If it's up to humans, they will play, they will play with the black and white whenever. The black will become white, the black could come white whenever they want. It depends who has the power. Now, who's right and who's wrong in the problem and the conflict between Russians and Ukraines? The one who has the power decides. <laughs> By the way, if we are living in Russia now, who's right? <laughs> the fact that we are living in the West. If it happened, if it happened, one of them has an overwhelming power and no one can stop him. Do you think we will be debating this debate? He will be the right. <laughs> and everyone else will shut up his mouth, regardless whether uh, this, this part or that part. This gives you an idea. It's not, you don't need just to know what is good and bad because you know and you don't care if you have the power. I'm giving you examples. So we have two parts of understanding this ayah, okay? It's not just to know that Allah is the source. <laughs> By the way, the mother of this kid is the one who converted to Islam now. He, it's, it's his mother, صح? <laughs> MashaAllah, Allah yahmadu. <laughs> هذا هذا الان زي كما قيل لاهل بدر اعملوا ما شئتم فانه مغفور لكم <تصفيق> هذا مسامح اليوم يصيح زي ما بده يلعب زي ما بده <تصفيق> ما شاء الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد من بعد رمضان ها 
من بعد رمضان من بعد رمضان ان شاء الله طيب ناو وي وي سيد ذات بيكوز وي ريد افتر ذات انما حرم عليكم الميتة والدم ولحم الخنزير وما اهل به لغيره فمن اضطر غير باغ ولا عاد فلا اثم عليه ان الله غفور رحيم هي هاز اونلي فوربيدن يو تو ايت كاريون ويتش از بيجز بلاد سواين سوري الجيفه الميتة سواين ويتش از بيج And what is slaughtered in the name of any other than Allah. But if someone is compelled by necessity, neither driven by desire nor exceeding immediate need, they will not be sinful. Surely Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. Now, today's ayah, which I will be dealing with just with the first ayah, and then inshallah we stop up to after Ramadan, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, إن الذين يكتمون ما أنزل الله من ال I will read the full paragraph then I will deal with one ayah إن الذين يكتمون ما أنزل الله من الكتاب ويشترون به ثمنا قليلا أولئك ما يأكلون في بطونهم إلا النار ولا يكلمهم الله يوم القيامة ولا يزكيهم ولهم عذاب أليم indeed those who hide Allah's revelations trading them for a fleeting gain consume nothing but fire into their bellies Allah in the day of judgment Allah will neither speak to them on the day of judgment nor will he purify them and they will suffer a painful punishment أولئك الذين اشتروا الضلالة بالهدى والعذاب بالمغفرة فما أصبرهم على النار They are the ones who trade guidance for misguidance and forgiveness for punishment. How persistent are they in pursuit of the hellfire? ذلك بأن الله نزل الكتاب بالحق وإن الذين اختلفوا في الكتاب لفي شقاق بعيد. That is because Allah has revealed the book in truth, and surely those who differ regarding it are totally engrossed in opposition. Let's go to the first one. إن الذين يكتمون ما أنزل الله من الكتاب. Indeed, those who hide Allah's revelations, trading them for a fleeting gain, consume nothing but fire into their bellies. What does this mean? Allah is stating clearly that during the history of human beings. passing by Jews, Christians, others before them, and Muslims, there are groups of people who have been honored by their Lord and received the revelation, which means the biggest gift in their life. Yet, they what? Hide. Is it possible? Yes. They hide the truth, even though they know. So Allah is stating, by the way, who knows the revelation? The ulama. Who is the expert in understanding the revelation of Allah? People of knowledge. We are not talking about ignorant people now. This is a very scary ayah. Allah is talking about those who hide the revelation. Wow. When I say hiding the revelation, I'm not discussing atheism now. <laughs> I'm not discussing ignorant disbelievers. We are discussing people who receive the revelation. Yani, Sheikh, I can't imagine. Ya Habibi, you have to imagine. <laughs> Because this happened in reality. This happened among the people of Israel and it happened and still happening among Muslims. You know, what is, what, what, I mean, What, what do we benefit from this ayah? From one angle, don't think the fact that you have knowledge, you have what? Full insurance and safety that خلاص, you are an angel and you will be from the people of the Jannah. No. Because at any moment, anyone might have a fitna. Because those, those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about a group of scholars before us and now we are witnessing. Now, now, in the political sphere, don't we witness some people, they twist the meaning of the text of the Quran. They misuse the text against the enemy of the leader in their country, politicians, and they know that they are killing them without a valid reason. 
Do, do, do we witness in our countries such people or now, now? Some ulama. Yes, we do find them. Al Habib, let's go to, in history. Libya, at the time of the Italian colonialism, Umar al Mukhtar, the greatest hero in the history of Libya, who was defending his country against the invaders. A group of Muslim ulama in Libya, they declared him as a terrorist. And they used the Quran against him. <laughs> uh, does it happen? Yes. Is it possible that someone knows the truth, yet he does not care? Yes. Is it possible that someone who is in the highest level of knowledge in his field, yet he does the opposite? Yes. So, you know what's the biggest benefit that I would love to share with you on this? The idea is not the knowledge. It is the attitude of arrogance or being humble, not just the knowledge. Because I keep repeating the idea. Who do you think out of the creation, apart, apart from the angels? Iblis, I think, should be considered apart from messengers and prophets, the normal people like us. If we want to compare the cleverest, most knowledgeable person among human beings with Iblis, who has more knowledge? Iblis, Satan. Satan. Who has more knowledge? Satan or the cleverest person on earth? Satan. <laughs> he has more knowledge. By the way, Satan, he was an eyewitness of the beginning of the creation of Adam. <laughs> he was there witnessing, eyewitness. He was, he was witnessing the ceremony of creating Adam. Can you imagine the amount of knowledge that he has? An eyewitness. He witnessed the ceremony of creating Adam out of mud. It was created and Allah injected the spirit in him while he was witnessing. And he was asked to prostrate. So in terms of the knowledge, none of us has one million percent of what, Ib what Iblis has. Yet, he refused. And he is a disbeliever, he is a non-believer, and he will be eternally in the hellfire. Is it a matter of knowledge? The attitude. That's why, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in many ayat about the diseases of the heart. Yes, we need the knowledge. But if this one is not cleansing, cleansed, if this one is not taken care of, whatever you have here, by the way, many clever scientists, they are atheists now. They should be the best believers because the clever person is the one who understands that the, this universe is impossible to be coming by, by, by chance. It's impossible. Scientists are, you know, I can't accept anyone to be an atheist, but not a mathematician. <laughs> Because people who study math, they can realize mathematics tells you that coincidence is impossible. <laughs> so when you see a professor in mathematics, an atheist, you say, La ilaha illallah. Yami, how come? Where is your knowledge? It's not a matter of knowledge now, just. If your heart refuses, you don't want. It comes. So just not to be amazed. Is it possible? Yes. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ طيب, Look now. We realize that some people, they know the truth, they are aware, they are scholars, yet they hide. Indeed, those who hide Allah's revelations, now, why? Trading them for a fleeting gain, which means... They did this because some, they were offered some silly price for that. Yet, they accepted to sell their religion and to sell the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, did it happen? Yes. Is it possible to happen at any time? Yes. Are we witnessing people who are doing this? Yes. What, what, what should we say? When you seek the knowledge, be careful. Don't seek the knowledge just to be proud of it or just to have an extra information or to have the prestige. Always seek the knowledge and ask Allah that this knowledge will make you more aware of 
the source of knowledge and more aware of the value of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how humble you should be with him. Otherwise, otherwise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran one of one of the people of Israel whom Allah gave him a great knowledge. It's amazing. Allah spoke about someone from those who believed before us. And according to narrations, he's one of the great, great ulama of the people of Israel in their time. Allah gave him a great knowledge. He decided to detach himself from this and he followed his desire and he did not care with the gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given to him. So let's ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our hearts and to be, be careful. While seeking the knowledge, be careful. If this knowledge will not make you closer to Allah, there is a problem in your attitude in seeking the knowledge. Because they received the revelations. <laughs> so be careful. قال أولئك ما يأكلون في بطونهم إلا النار they are consuming nothing but fire this is a metaphor which means what they are doing definitely will cause them to be punished in the hell fire for sure قال ولا يكلمهم الله يوم القيامة ولا يزكيهم ولهم عذاب أليم Allah will neither speak to them on the day of judgment nor will he purify them and they will suffer a painful punishment. This is an Arabic, it is rhetorical Arabic expression which means they will have fire in their belly. God will not speak with them. He will not purify them. This is rhetorical Arabic expression to tell you that there is no hope for them of forgiveness. It's finished. The one who does this, his fire is closed like when we say, this crime deserves capital punishment. Finito. Ta, no discuss. Khalas. <laughs> there is no room to review this case. They will be, you know, in the highest level of punishment in the day of judgment. I will stop just by this because we have just a few minutes. Just let's review the most important thing in these two ayahs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from one side, he is telling us not to eat and not to do except the good. Our biggest lesson, Allah is the one who decides what is lawful, what not lawful, what is good and what is bad. Then he gave us an idea about such and such and such and such. Don't eat this, don't do this, be careful. Whether we realize or not what is the wisdom and mostly we realize, but however, if it happened, we don't know why we submit. Generally speaking, you need to know. The majority of our teachings in Islam, they are justifiable, which means you can realize the wisdom behind it. Why, for example, alcohol is prohibited? Reasons, harmful. Why interest is not allowed, usury, in the money? Because basically, you are changing the purpose of existence of money on earth, which to be a means of communication. It's like, for example, you have a goods, you have an item, you have a service, for example, this service. Hmm? I have a money. Money, item. Item, money. Money, service. Service, money. Or donation for the sake of Allah. <laughs> now, when the money is controlled in a place and it became the item, okay? The people who has the money to save their time not to trade and to work will put their money with the bankers and they will stay there lazy. Now, the rest of the people, like poor people like us, we need the money. Instead of going to the people who has the money and make trading with them, we go to the bankers. The bankers, they take the money from the people of the money and they lend us money and we return the money by money. <laughs> Instead of using it as trading, goods, services. So money is created to keep, you know, transactions money. It's used, it's a means of communication. When you freeze it as an item, you kill the reason of its existence. And those who have the money, will be controlling the lives of the people because of the interest and the 
الفائده المركبه شو اسمها بالانجليزي؟ كومباوند انترست اوكي يو نو ذا كومب والله اي نو ون اوف ماي ريتيفز مي الله يسند هيز ميرسي نعم هي باست اواي اي ثينك اباوت 20 ييرز اجو وين اي واز ليتل كيد اي نيو وين هي باست اواي هي واز 75 اف هي از ليفينج اف هي از الايف ناو اي ثينك هي شود بي 100 اي ريمبر اباوت 20 25 ييرز اجو وين هي باست اواي I was told by my relatives that this relative of mine, he took a loan by interest 35 years ago. He paid the 35, sorry, the 3,000 JDs, 27,000 on a span of a time of 26 years. You know what used to happen? He took 3,000. With the compound interest, they became 4,000. He paid two, then he had a collapse, stopped working. The two returned to be seven. Then he started repaying the seven. He managed to finish four, rest three. Then he had difficulties, the three became eight. Then he paid six, two left. He had the difficulties in his life. The two became seven. <laughs> he paid six at one counter. When he paid them, the total was 27,000 on a span of 26 years. To know, you know, the one who owns the money or controls the money, not necessarily owns the money, because the people, they put their money. And the bankers, they take the money and they lend the money, which means they control us. This is an indirect human way of modern enslavement. That's why usually or is prohibited it's not prohibited which means not to give the superiority for anyone against anyone to enslave him for example imagine how beautiful islam is we have the sharing for example brother naim for example i have a money brother naim is an expert let's say in communication and media and recording the fact that i have the money i'm not superior i share with him we want to open for example a special company for media my money his experience, my money, his connections, 50-50. We made a company, we go up, alhamdulillah, we have, let's say, for example, uh, a good, uh, profits. profits, for example. Good profits, one million dollar, 500,000, 500,000. But you lost everything. I lose money, he loses efforts. You with me? For example, let's imagine that I'm expert in bodybuilding or this kind of gym for men or for example i'm not you can realize that i'm not okay that's so it's a theoretic hypothetical example okay imagine that i'm a professional in bodybuilding and i have experts in the proteins will you know will biceps or triceps let's imagine yani. it's good to imagine it's for free <laughs> he has the money we made a gym we worked i put amazing efforts with my connections, my experience, and something I brand beautiful, the people they came. <laughs> Mr. Corona come. Everything was collapsed. We lost everything. He loses his money, I lose my efforts. In the banking system, Habibi, we don't care. Earthquake, volcano, COVID-19, COVID-20, COVID-30. <laughs> this is your problem, Habibi. You pay money. You don't pay, we return back everything, and you are out. This is enslavement. When I tell you, that's why you need to understand when Allah, I'm giving you the justification why riba is haram. This is the philosophical wisdom behind the prohibition of the riba or the usury or the, uh, the, 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 the interest of the banks. You got my point? So we realize when Islam, it's not just class, it's haram, that's it, haram. Close your eyes. We are not robots, no, we understand. However, just uh, simple, simple things, we don't know exactly the hikmah. Like, why we circle seven times around the Kaaba, why you pray five times, not four times, why we pray the Fajr two rak'ah and the Maghrib three, why not the Maghrib two and the Fajr three, we don't have an answer. Why, why the swine or the pigs uh, uh, prohibited, we don't have clear-cut answer. Allah, so this 5% is a hikmah ta'abudiyya, which means, the core point of the idea to submit to the commandment, even if you don't know why. But the vast majority of teachings, you can't realize the hikmah or the wisdom. Directly, 
clearly or with some kind of deep knowledge and understanding. Okay? And the last thing we highlighted, that the fact that you know the good and bad, the right and wrong, does not mean it is a guarantee that you will be saved. Because you need to submit and to accept and to be humble. And Allah is telling us that a group of believers during the history from those who preceded us, they received the revelation and yet they hide the revelation for a very silly price. اشتروا به ثمنا قليلا أولئك ما يأكلون في بطونهم إلا النار ولا يكلمهم الله يوم القيامة ولا يزكيهم ولا ينظر إليهم which means they will have a severe punishment. So let's be careful to be humble with Allah. The idea, the whole problem of Iblis, the symbol of evil in our faith, it was arrogance. Arrogance means refusing, refusing the commandment of the Creator. So it's not just the knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us, inshallah, to be a good submittive beings, i.e. Muslims. <laughs> because a Muslim is the one who has submitted himself to the will of his Lord. Jazakumullah khair. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. You know after tomorrow is Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your deeds. We will turn back after Ramadan, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. To know all the details, you can just keep uh, following the group. Uh, Brother Shihab, can you raise up your hand? If you want to know when we will start, what we will do, let your name be in the group with Brother Shihab. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.